Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can build from scratch your own process that will trace a Power BI dataset refresh and post those results back to a streaming dataset to allow you to visualize the refresh in real time while the refresh is running. So here I have a Power BI workspace and in this workspace I have a dataset called AdventureWorks DW. Now later once I've built this process I'm going to click the refresh now button to to initialize the refresh and we're going to visualize those results in real time. So the first thing we need to do is build a small application using, using Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to create a brand new folder on my workstation uh, to put the application in. So I'm going to jump to the command window and create a folder called my project. Uh, going to make a directory called my project, going to change into that directory. And now what I'm going to do is run a GitHub command to make a clone of um, a repository that I have on my dax.tips website. So this is called git clone and here's the name of the location as to, to where to pull it down from. And that's currently cloning that. And if we have a look back at the folder structure, it's copied down a set of files etc. I want to jump into, and this is a really important point, jump into the trace post folder and now that I'm sitting inside the trace post folder type the code and full stop command which will open Visual Studio Code. Either that or I could go to Windows Explorer, right click on the trace post folder and open it there but it's important that you open that and not the parent folder. That's opening Visual Studio Code we can see here, here are the files that have been uh, brought down from the GitHub repository and any subsequent changes that uh, are made to this will get reflected. I'll show you later how you can update that. Now initially you might get this dialog here um, that is asking you to restore dependencies. Um, let's do that and what this is doing is pulling down the support libraries that we need for this. Um, if we have a look in the trace pros, trace to post uh, C sharp project file, it's saying that we need these client libraries and that restore is effectively going and getting the, that data for you automatically. All of the code for the, um, the app is, is in the program.cs file, file, but the first thing we need to do is update the app settings.json file. Here's some connection string detail that will help the um, application find uh, which database we want to trace. And here's uh, my one, this is the workspace I was just sitting in. And because it's Power BI, I also need to include the initial catalog um, of the name of the report or the data set I want to refresh. And here is the name of the workspace that I want to have my streaming data set created in. Now remember, I have got three objects here. When I first run this, it's going to create a new data set that's going to be the streaming data set, thanks to Rui Romano, of, um, who, who helped me with some code here. Jumping back to the application, let's open program.cs and hit F5 to start kicking off this. And it's just should simply run. Now I'm going to get an MFA dialog uh, off on a different screen. Bring the console up here. It's going to ask me to sign in, and that's complete. Great. And what we should hopefully see now in the background is a, is a new object appear here called AS Push Dataset. And now it's going to. ask me to log into the na onto the AS database we want, want to trace. Now they happen to be in the same tenant here, but they're not necessarily going to be in the same tenant. So um, you, you do still need to have uh, two login prompts here. And we'll know that this is successful when we get three lines in the center of this console, basically telling us um, uh, where we're up to. The queue count tells us how many uh, values are, are currently sitting in the queue, and this is good, there are none. Rows process will tell us since the application started how many rows we've sent up to the AS push data set and every five seconds we'll see this uh, value repeat just to confirm that the application hasn't frozen or hung on us. And that's it. So now what we need to do is um, get some data into this data set. So we can click off a refresh of our, um, of our uh, data set over here. So 
that's going to go away and connect to my underlying data source and rebring in some data. On the push data set, I can create a report on this now. And I can drag the traces measure over onto the dashboard. This was created by the C Sharp app just now. You can run that, it'll only create it the first time you run the app. Um, and let's make that a KPI. Now we want what we want to do is um, put the current time, the long object, and the integer data fields into a line chart. So current time on axis, long object name on legend, and um, integer data into values. Let's make this a little bigger, shall we? We also need to put the event class over into the visual, the filters for this visual, because we only care about progress report current for this particular line chart. And another thing I suggest you might do is set the relative time filter of this chart to perhaps only show the last 20 minutes. Apply filter. Okay, now at the moment we're just modifying this um, in Power BI Desktop. We can, uh, yeah, we can save this as a report and we'll call this trace post report. Save that. And to get this, oh, another thing I, I, I like to do is um, turn off the titles and the legend because they're a bit wordy. So let's turn off the uh, legend and the title and save this. Cool. But let's get this to a dashboard so we can look at this information in real time. So let's click on the here and we're going to call this a new dashboard. Uh, trace post dashboard wonderful and we don't want to go to the dashboard just yet let's pin this as well oh let's put a few more objects onto the um, the tooltip for this visual so come back here and perhaps on the tooltip let's put the uh, table name the partition name the um, session ID the duration, what else might be interesting? Um, that should be enough for this. Oh, average duration, if that's useful. Okay, let's save this. And let's pin this visual to the same dashboard. Let's go to the dashboard this time. And we can, we can rearrange these to suit. So we'll put this over here, make this a little larger. Nice. Okay, now I know that this particular data set has a 181 um, events on a refresh. So I'm going to go back and kick off the, um, the refresh again, just to see what happens. Now each of these lines represent an individual table and partition. The steepness of the line represents um, how, how fast the processing is going, how many rows, rows are represented on the y-axis, rows per second on the x-axis. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is go back to that same data set and kick off another refresh. We should be able to find our uh, application. Now our application has suggested we processed 181 rows. Oh, it's getting data already. Let's go back to the dashboard and see what's going on. And here we go. So I'm not touching anything here. In fact, what I might do is grab the application, shrink this up, park it here, so you can see both how many rows have been sent by the core application versus how many have been received in the dashboard. Now what we have is a, perhaps a couple of fast ones getting done quickly. So we have the dim customer and the fact internet sales uh, 2011 table, which are quite small. But I can sit back now and... Uh, Watch the new lines just increase. Now if I waited half an hour and kicked off another refresh, because we set the relative time filter on the on the report, this should start disappearing off. Now you can adjust that to suit. Um, and ideally, you should be able to now log in to this tenant 
using your mobile device and have a look to see what's going on on your um, data set if you're you know, traveling to work or, or, or interested, but um, I think that's pretty cool. So hopefully this, this video was helpful in showing you how easy it is to get this up and running. That was relatively quick. Please let me know if you, um, uh, if you like this video. Uh, what I'll probably do is a separate video showing how you can do something um, this with the new streaming event hub coming shortly. Um, so thanks for watching and I hope you find this useful. Cheers.